So the last two videos are all about getting digits and some predefined characters onto this LED display very simply using the Mac 7219 built-in control on the base of this unit. Now whilst it worked you probably noticed as we built up the code it became very very repetitive and that's something we need to address now before it becomes unmanageable. So this is all about coding techniques, very simple, very quick and hopefully will be done in a jiffy. And for those of you watching my previous videos, you may notice we're using the power bank that uh, was built up as a kit in videos 6 and 7. And we've even got the charger doctor on here, which was also mentioned in, I think, video 6 at the beginning. This displays the voltage from my power bank and the current, if any, drawn from it. And at the moment we're saying 70 to 80 milliamps has been drawn. That's not, a, not an unreasonable amount, to be quite honest. So there we are linking back to, to previous videos. Shameless plug, I know, but there we are. Right, onwards with the code. Let's see what we can do to tidy it all up. So, welcome back to the coding window. Now, yesterday, when I finished the video off, we managed to get all the digits displayed as we wanted to and displayed help 7219, I believe. Now, the code here, as you can see, is very repetitive. Now, I mentioned this to say this isn't the way really to write code. When you discover a repeating pattern like this, you should really sort it out. I mean, it's the dry principle, as it's known, is that don't repeat yourself. Now, what we are doing here, of course, is repeating ourselves many, many times. So we're going to look at one block of code like this one where it says test mode off. Now, as we can see, there's a digital write that always refers to the chipped select pin and set it to low. We then do a shift out on the same pins, and the only difference is this bit at the end, which is, which is the address register we're talking to and then there's another shift out with the value that belongs to that address register and then we have another piece of code here digital write once again on the chip select which is high and that doesn't change so the only bits of data that change is in this entire block of code is the address which is that one there and the value that goes with that address if we look at the next one down, for example, shut down, we can see that it's that bit there that's changed and that bit there that's changed. So this is immediately screaming out for some sort of refactoring to say we can do better than this and I'm going to show you how. So what we need to do is to somehow put this code into a little routine all by itself that will accept two parameters, that is to say the address and the value that goes with that address. So let's just type one in at the top um, void because we're not returning anything out of this subroutine this method we're going to say display and the two parameters are a byte called the address that's the name we're making up and then another byte for the value squiggly brackets there we are that's our signature as it's known so let's just add a comment so we know what this does So there we have the bare bones of a common routine where we're going to pass in an address and a value which is represented in our current code by these two values here. So well, I think we can take one of these, copy it and paste it in. Now what we don't want here of course is a hard coded value. That one will be replaced by the word address which I've defined here at the top. And this value here, we're actually going to replace with the word value. So when this gets called display, we're going to pass in an address and a value and pass these in to the shift out calls. So that means we can now replace this entire block of code with a single call, as long as we pass in the address value and the data value. So 0f and 0. So we can say here display. 0x, 0 0f, and 0. Semicolon. Now that is going to call this, which does exactly the same job, except that it's going to be a common routine for all of these. So the shutdown, which is only different in the 0c and 0, will be display 0x, 0c, and 0. Now you might have noticed here that's a lowercase f and that's an uppercase c. It makes absolutely no difference and it is purely a personal preference 
on the developer's side. However, what I would say is stick to one or the other. So this sort of combination of upper and lower cases you don't want. So I'm going to change this to an uppercase F. So there we have test mode off and shut down now with these two little lines. So rather than you watch me replace all the following blocks that only change these individual characters at the end, I'm going to do that and then come back to you. Right, I've replaced all our verbose code now with a simple call to the subroutine here at the top, this little method here. And as you can see, the actual code now is pretty small. This is all it is. So what we're doing here, we're setting up the pins in output mode, turning the display off, shutting down, etc, etc. That's it. Now, the other thing about having robust and maintainable code, of course, is commenting it. And yesterday we did put a few comments in, like test mode off, shut down, set the decode mode, etc, etc. What you've got to think about is if you come back to this code in three months, six months, a year's time, are you really going to remember what address code 09 means and what FF means? But it's going to be very difficult to follow the code. So what you need to record here in your comments is why you're doing something rather than what you're doing. The what is plain for everybody to see by seeing the code. It's the why. Why am I setting this to 01? What does that mean? That's the best way of commenting code without being too verbose and just think of yourself as being the person coming in six months time to look at this code to change it or to use it in another project to repurpose it effectively and wondering what on earth you did six months ago with some vague recollection of what went on. So let's see how we can improve some of these comments and I'll come back to you. Right back again didn't take long now the comments on here are pretty arbitrary they're what I think sound as though they describe what's going on you might have a different view the point is you're talking effectively first of all to yourself in the future to say this is what I've done and why I've done it and potentially of course well in this case I'm commenting this for other people to read so it's important that what I've said is meaningful but short and not too verbose. So we've defined all our three pins we've set up our common routine that does all the work for us and it's a very simple common routine there's only four commands that we're using here we're setting our output pin modes and then each one of these addresses that we're using here to um, show exactly what we're doing um, is being documented on the top. Now the other thing of course is to do is always paste in a URL or a file name for a PDF where we have our data sheet because the chances are you might want to refer to that as well. But I guess we ought to test it now and just plug our 7219 back in again and see what it says. So welcome back to the real world as it were. Um, let's plug in this device this time not to the uh, the power bank but we want to plug it in of course to the computer now so that we can upload that new code so that's the original code that we had there we are help 1275 it's quite bright it looks very bright on the camera anyway right let's um, upload the code I don't think the port numbers changed so it should be okay let's have a look so it's compiling and upload and flashy flashy off it goes it's uploading you can probably see the uh, Arduino flash there we are look and straight away help 7219 oh the numbers have changed well it's only appropriate isn't it when we're talking about the Mac 7219 okay that's it then I hope this uh, video has been useful and catch you on the next one thanks for watching I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting remember you can leave comments down below and also click that little button that says subscribe Okay, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.